Hi, I'm Tommy Thompson and this is part 3 of my Pathfinding and Unity tutorial series here on Table Flip Games. In parts 1 and 2 of the series I looked at setting up a navigation mesh in a scene, a nav mesh agent that can then travel across it, and then how to place obstacles to make the game world a lot more interesting. So with that complete, how do we then set up a basic navigation or route system that allows for a nav mesh agent to run a basic patrol? Let's put something together and explore how that works. This tutorial starts with, as you can see here, a basic scene that I've already put together that has a bunch of obstacles in place to build something of a semi-interesting environment. However, I then wanted to have some method by which I could move between specific points in that environment. Now I can actually go so far as to automate this using items of interest in the world to infer specific locations to move towards in the long term, but for now I've decided to place them by hand, acting as something of a level designer. And then of course, as you can see now, having the agent navigate through them. So I started by creating a simple class that stores information about a given point in the world, which are my patrol points here. And you can see here in each of them that I actually have this waypoint class that's been attached to them. And what it does is it actually just stores an inf piece of information about that location. And also you can see up here that I've actually turned on the on draw gizmo. Let's just be turn it off on. And with the gizmo mode on, I can actually visualize it in the scene and I can actually see where it is. So if you've never used Draw Gizmo, think of it as like your debug drawing tools. You can have active in the scene to see how things are operating, like debug.log, except visually. So if I jump into the actual class itself and zoom it in a little bit, we can see here that I've just got, I mean, naturally it's going to have a transform because it's a class that inherits from mono behavior. And I've also then added a debug draw radius of like one as a float. And then I'm using the onDraw gizmo method. I set the color to red and I draw a wire sphere from the current transform position of this object and give it a debug draw radius. Not exactly that complicated. And with the waypoint class in place, we can then place a variety of game objects complete with this waypoint class attached to them. Now I've just created a bunch of empty game objects, but you might have items that you want in your game to be of interest to a character and make them walk towards them. So you could attach that component to it. I mean, I've just created this really simple example for you here, but feel free to put together any old configuration you feel like. The next trick is to add functionality so that the actual non-player character will then patrol around a variety of these waypoints. Now, there are multiple ways to go about this. You could select a waypoint at random, which is fine, but ultimately it means that the character will look a little less realistic if they're suddenly changing their mind and going from locations next to one another and suddenly to one on the other side of the map. So what I've opted for is a version that will simply iterate through a predetermined list of positions that with a certain probability can then decide to change direction. Now I've already prepared the code that I've built here. Now you can either pause and type it out yourself um, as I gradually work my way through it here, or you can pull it down from GitHub and play along with it accordingly. I'm going to focus on walking through what I've done and how it works. It's actually really straightforward. First up, if we actually go to the very top of the file here. One of the things that we've added is that we now have a list of patrol points which are going to be used for me to iterate through. I've also actually got this uh, boolean that dictates whether the agent is waiting at a given node or not. I didn't actually show this in the example earlier, but if I actually play it again, one of the things that's happening is that this character will immediately move towards a point and then it moves to another one. But I actually have this boolean check here and I'm going to tell it now to wait for three seconds before it goes to the next one. And notice how it also switched direction. That's because there's a small probability that it will actually change direction as well. Let's just go back in to the code. So there you go, there's the patrol waiting flag, the total amount of time, again, a serialized field that's exposed in the inspector and the switch probability. We also have the patrol points, as I mentioned before. And then the first thing I do is I check to see whether or not my patrol points are null or if there's actually a big enough patrol points to do a patrol with because we need at least two in order to do a patrol, right? And I've actually done it in the case of the actual example here that we've actually dragged and dropped them onto this object. And I'm going to show a more advanced example later in the next video about how we can kind of circumvent that. And then during the update, what we're doing is, are we actually close to the current destination? And this is largely stolen from the NPC move 
uh, class that I wrote two videos ago just to actually get something working. So now if we're traveling, have I reached a certain distance of my, you know, my particular target, then traveling is false. However, if I'm now actually going to wait, we're going to set the waiting flag to true and I'm going to reset my wait timer. And if it isn't, if I'm not waiting, then change the patrol point and set the destination. However, if we are waiting, and I've set that boolean flag to true, we're then going to say, right, we'll increment my wait timer by the delta time, and then if the wait timer has then exceeded the total wait time, which, remember, was the variable that I declared up here, which is currently three seconds, then we're no longer waiting. Change the patrol point, set the destination. Setting the destination is almost exactly the same thing as it was in the previous example, where if you see here, I got a target vector of the destination, which was actually just a transform, and then I set that destination in the nav mesh agent. Here, however, what I've done is I've said, right, well, provided I've got some patrol points, I get the current patrol index, which is an integer I'm using to access this list of waypoints that I've built, I then get the target vector from it by pulling that object out of the list of, of waypoints. Then I just set my destination to be that target vector and I reset traveling to be true. In order to change the patrol point, and this is the last real bit of code in it, this is it. First of all, I use the Unity Engine random to then generate a range between 0 and 1, check whether it's less than or equal to my switch probability, and then I decide whether I'm going to continue to patrol forward or backwards. And I just say, well, whatever the value is, make it the opposite of it, because that's a really simple way to just negate um, a, a Boolean value that you've got, or whatever it is now, just make it not what it is now sorted. And then if we're actually patrolling forward, I then get the current patrol index by actually incrementing it by one. But the cheeky thing I'm actually doing here is I'm actually, you know, kind of doing all this in one line of code. What I'm actually saying here is current patrol index plus one, and then checking if current if the current patrol index exceeds patron po patrol points dot count, and if so, I reset it back to zero. And I do that using a modulus command. So actually, another way of doing this would actually be to do say something like current patrol index plus plus if current patrol index greater than or equal to patrol points dot count current patrol index equals zero. That's a lot more code and that's actually why I didn't bother so I'm just going to quickly comment that out. There we go. That is, this here does exactly the same thing in one line. And it's a really nice little trick. Um, I can't really get away with the same thing here on the else condition but what I've actually said here is okay decrement it, I actually notice how I'm doing minus minus current patrol index versus current patrol index minus minus. Because um, actually in order to do that, what I would have... And what that means is quickly decrement it, then check if it's less than zero. And if it is, then we're going to set it to be patrol points dot count minus one. If you're not used to using the minus minus is a pre-process rather than a post-process command, then the equivalent would actually be something like this. Control you know, minus minus, and then if, again, I was cheating a little bit, I just decided to, you know, do it all in as few lines as possible, because I was just being a bit lazy. And there you go, there's the commented out version. Both of these do exactly the same thing, I just streamlined it a little bit. And yeah, that's essentially it in a nutshell. The update method is now paying attention to whether we're close to that destination. If we get close enough and the wait boolean is active, then the agent will wait at the current location for the allotted time. If they don't wait or the wait is finished, then it sets the next patrol point and updates the destination. It will iterate forwards or backwards and loop around the size of the collection accordingly. And if we actually see that the patrol points, if I actually go into the scene view, you can see that my patrol points are deliberately structured as a kind of cycle around the map. As you can see, it can then patrol in a particular direction. It will iterate forwards or backwards and loop around the size of the collection accordingly, but it will also switch the direction depending on whether a probability is swapped. So in this third tutorial, we've learned how to create at least a basic pattern of movement between a set of predefined locations. Now this is actually rather suboptimal for a number of reasons. Namely, that we could aim to pull these locations out of the nav mesh. There's always the chance that the patrol point we've placed can't be found on the nav mesh, but also that it only follows the list in the specified order I entered it into the serialized field. 
As such, I'm going to spend the next two videos embellishing this example, first resolving the waypoints such that they begin to establish an adjacency list of sorts, as well as address specific problems that could occur when using this type of approach. This has been part 3 of the Unity Pathfinding tutorial series here on Table Flip Games. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more game dev tutorials, plus our channel is supported over on Patreon, so if you'd like to get access to our videos early, vote on new topics and get access to the original source materials, head on over to patreon.com forward slash tableflipgames. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.